Welcome everybody to Forza Horizon 3 and today we're taking a look at the 2013 Dodge Dart GT. Now this was produced from 2012 to 2016 with 2013 being the first model year and it's based on a modified variant of the Fiat Compact platform and the modifications cost a gigantic one billion dollars and uh, yeah they didn't really get their investment back uh, the Fiat Chrysler Automobile Corporation because only 330,000 of these were sold and it was considered a financial flop which is why it was eventually dropped in 2016 so yeah it only lasted four years which is kind of indicative of the uh, kind of uh, car that this is it this is quite frankly because it really doesn't evoke anything quite frankly it's just a little bit bland quite frankly I and mean, that's not to say that it hasn't got things going for it it's uh, got plenty of good suspension going on underneath. At the front it's got independent McPherson struts, coil springs, twin tube dampers and stabiliser bar and at the rear it's got independent multi-link suspension. It's also got a decent range of engines but the engine in this is really not the one I'd go for since it's not got all that much power and it's really not quite economical. So as you can see it's a 2.4 litre inline 4 engine which is naturally aspirated and it produces 184 horsepower and 171 pounds feet of torque which yeah isn't really all that much from an engine of that size a Dodge Neon SRT4 for instance produces 230 horsepower and 250 pounds feet of torque from an engine about the same size but had a turbocharger on it so you know Dodge do have a good history of front wheel drive front engine cars being quite quick especially of this size but this really doesn't have all that much power and quite frankly I go for the 1.4 litre inline 4 engine from Fiat which is turbocharged slightly less horsepower but it's got more torque at the lower end and is also far more economical but that's whether or not you can find a used version of that car because like I said it has gone out of production uh, interior wise uh, it's decent enough it's really uh, nothing remarkable but everything from a relatively modern car it, it is there if you'd expect it it's got uh, digital gauges and uh, analog ones as you can see and uh, yeah it's decently sized inside and out but yeah it's again a small saloon as you can see there's really not that much room in there so yeah not a massively impressive car in terms of looks not massively impressive in terms of power it's front and wheel drive and a little underpowered like I said so it's not going to have the uh, most exciting driving experience in the world but we're going to take it out there nonetheless and see what it can do so see you when we get there right let's see what this Dodge can do so yeah when you couple a car with not all that much horsepower or all that much torque with the fact that it weighs 3,296 pounds it's only inevitable that it's going to be slow and uh, yeah it's not all that quick especially compared to the more powerful and lighter European competition. You only have to look at a Renault Clio RS or a Vauxhall Corsa VXR, which are two cars that are both have more power, um, less weight, and uh, far quicker in terms of acceleration. Might not be as quick in terms of top speed, but far quicker in terms of acceleration and far more exciting cars to drive. In terms of acceleration, this car can do 0 to 16 8.719 seconds. 0 to 121.1 seconds going on to a top speed of 149 miles an hour so yeah not all that great especially for a car of this type which is a you know, kind of a hot hatch subcompact saloon car and yeah really isn't all that quick and um, because it is front wheel drive and doesn't have all that much power it's not all that exciting to drive either Yes, it does have decent suspension, and it's certainly not as ar archaic as other American cars, you know, from previous years. Because obviously, before you know, 2010s, etc., like that we were dealing with live axles and the like, like that. So it's not as archaic in suspension terms like that, but it just doesn't have the power to really justify all that suspension underneath. It's really just not being used, and yeah, the car in itself is just quite bland kind of see why it was a pretty much a flop in terms of sales. It wasn't even able to crack 90,000 sales in a given year so yeah, didn't really do all that well. Maybe the uh, smaller engine turbocharged version is a bit more fun. I imagine it is with torque being higher at lower end in the RPM range. But yeah, for a car that is supposed to be more or less a top of the line car, 
it's really rather weak. So, yeah, I can fully understand why uh, Chrysler discontinued his car after only four years, quite frankly. And uh, maybe it more could have come of it if it had had stronger sales, because they were planning a uh, SRT version later down the line, but obviously because it got cancelled, they never produced it. So maybe we could have had a better car if it had sold better. But the fact is, Dodge have had good times before with a car like this, with the uh, Neon SRT4, like I said. That car had far more power, far more torque. Even though I was no fan of how it looked, it was a decently quick car and a fun one at that. Whereas this is just too bland and you know too inoffensive and just doesn't have anything unique going for it for me to really recommend it. So even though I do like the fact it's in the game because it does uh, make the very make the car list more varied, which is something I've always been you know supporter of. And yeah, the more var variety that we have, the better. But quite frankly there could have been a better choice that they could have chosen from a car class like this but it is a car that we've never really had in a game before from Forza we've not had all that many cars in this range from America so it is nice to see but it's not a car that I'm gonna ever really drive all that much outside of being upgraded and yeah far too bland and far too inoffensive to really uh, recommend trying out so yeah decent enough but not something I'm gonna ever recommend anyway Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.